IHH Healthcare is selling its 50% stake in an Indian JV to its partner, Apollo Hospitals Enterprise, for 227.08 million ringgit cash or 4.1 billion Indian rupees. According to Apollo Hospitals' boss filing to the National Stock Exchange of India, the Indian hospital chain will be buying the stake in Apollo Glen Eagles Hospital, helped by IHH's Singaporean unit, Glen Eagles Development. Apollo Glen Eagles Hospital runs a 750-bed multi-speciality hospital in in Kolkata. The acquisition is to be completed by December 15th and would make Apollo Glen Eagles Hospital a 100% owned subsidiary of Apollo Hospitals. In order to fund the purchase, Apollo's board has agreed it to raising 830.56 million ringgit or 15 billion rupees via qualified institutional placement to help buy out IHH. IHH Healthcare is exiting its maiden investment in India to abide by a clause in a non-compete agreement that states that that any partner who takes up a stake in a rival hospital will have to sell its stake to the other. This is after the Malaysian healthcare provider succeeded in its 1.1 billion US dollar bid for the assets of Fortis Healthcare. Cash Trap Gunting Hong Kong is selling a 50% stake in Gunting Macau Holdings to White Supreme Corp for 50 million Hong Kong dollars or 6.41 million US dollars. White Supreme Corp is an investment holding company owned by real estate, leisure and hospitality investor Ao Miu Leong. Under the deal to which Ao is the guarantor, White Supreme Corp will also pay 700 million Hong Kong dollars or 89.74 million US dollars to take over a shareholder's loan that Gunting Macau owes together with interests to Gunting's Hong Kong unit Star Cruises Asia Holding. The sum amounted to no less than 800 million Hong Kong dollars as at November 10th. The agreement also includes put and call options for the remaining 50% stake in Gunting Macau. Gunting Hong Kong said the disposal is aligned with its objective to sell non-core assets and that it will reduce its financial burden in meeting future funding requirements in relation to Gunting Macau's business. It expects the exercise to result in a loss of about 159 million US dollars. However, the transaction will also increase Gunting Hong Kong's liquidity and the sale proceeds will be used for general working capital and to fund the group's cruise-related and other operations. Am Investment Bank believes the average selling prices of gloves will drop as there will no longer be a rush for gloves. However, prices will remain stable at a higher level than pre-pandemic levels due to the broader usage of the product. In a note on Top Glove Corp today, its analyst Tong Pak Leng said he believes that glove demand will remain strong based on reasons outlined by Top Glove. These include a higher awareness of personal hygiene and broader use of gloves beyond the healthcare sector. In addition, there may not be an oversupply of gloves after the pandemic as Top Glove had pointed out that there are key issues in ramping up supply, including the availability of contractors to build production lines, the shortage of foreign workers and constraints when it comes to securing nitrile raw materials. Meanwhile, spot orders for nitrile gloves have been fully sold for the next three months and spot orders for natural rubber powder-free gloves are also increasing. He maintained his whole call on Top Glove with a lower Fair value of seven ringgit eighty eight. The counter closed two percent lower today at seven ringgit seventy. Salcon is the latest to join the Stampede to grab a share of the supernormal profit in the rubber glove industry. The water and wastewater engineering firm, whose share price has more than doubled within a month, announced its plan to diversify into glove manufacturing. It intends to pay $28.56 million for a 51% stake in glove maker JR Engineering and Medical Technologies Malaysia. The proposed acquisition comes with a profit guarantee of $10 million a year for the coming three financial years. According to Salcon, with an annual production of over 336 million gloves from four single former production lines in their factory located in Hulu, Slango, JR is currently operating beyond its capacity. It plans to ramp up its production capacity by an additional 12 lines to a total of 16 production lines within a year at an estimated capital expenditure of 150 million. This will bring the group's total annual production capacity 
capacity to 3 billion pieces and will be funded via internally generated funds and bank borrowings. Salcon says JR has already in place the necessary approvals that will enable it to export to the US, Europe and other markets. Its share price closed 5.6% higher at 38 sen, the highest level since July 2018 from 18 sen early last month. Compensation income of 50.54 million helped to give a strong boost to Star Media Group's earnings in the third quarter. The media company's net profits soared to 26.92 million from 250,000 a year ago. Quarterly revenue, however, fell 39.4% to 48.21 million ringgit. The compensation was for the late delivery of vacant possession of the investment property under construction from Jack's Island Circle. The recognition of this compensation helped swing its print and digital segment back into the black. Meanwhile, the group's radio broadcasting and event and exhibition segments recorded losses amid cautious advertising spending and cancelled offline events due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Going forward, the group expects revenue growth from its digital segment despite the challenging market conditions. It says it is well positioned to weather through these unprecedented challenges. <laughs> 